It's good to see you all. My name's Scott Brud. If you don't know, I get to serve as the pastor here. And we're about to enter a very precious time called baptism, right? a very special thing that Jesus gave to the church. You see, before we do this, one of the things that I want to do is take a second to kind of clarify what we believe about this, because there's all sorts of different doctrine and theology about what baptism is. You and I believe in the gospel. If we believe that Jesus has accomplished everything necessary for us, to save us from our sin and bring us back to God. We don't add on to it. Our works don't redefine that. We simply put all of our trust and all of our hope and all of our confidence in the blood of Jesus to have washed us of our sins and bring us back into right relationship with God. That's the gospel. Baptism is not the gospel. Baptism is not what saves. Baptism into water is not what washes of sin. Baptism into water is a declaration. The, the one way that I, I, I can describe this that I think makes a lot of sense is the idea of a wedding band. This is a public symbol of a spiritual reality. A spiritual reality that I have been united to my wife as one flesh. In the same way, this is a public declaration, a public symbol Whoever is being baptized has been united to Christ alone, and Christ is who sees them through. So that's what we believe about baptism. That's ultimately also what we believe about the gospel. And so this morning, we have the privilege of celebrating with heaven one who has repented of their sins and is trusting in Jesus alone to have accomplished everything they need before the Father in heaven. And that man is a guy named Jerry. So what we're going to do now is Jerry is going to come up, and one of his good friends, Truman, is going to meet us up here as well. And Jerry is going to share his testimony of how he, what his life was like before he came to know Christ, how he came to know Christ, and what his life has been like since coming to know Christ. And he's also going to explain a little bit as to why he wants to be baptized. So, Jerry? Yeah, brother. Okay, it's been a big day for me already. It's been a big two weeks, and I'm very proud to tell you what I was, what happened, how I came to see him, and what I feel in my heart I need to do, and what baptism means to me. Four questions God put to me, what he wanted is, God help me keep this in five minutes. In Jesus' name, I pray that, because I'm telling you now, I don't shut up about anything. I never have, I got a mouth, and all of a sudden God has turned, God has turned me into everything that I made fun of. I made fun of people stomping their feet and screaming, Lord, the Lord, the Lord. Ah ha, laugh at that. I have got it now. I made fun of relatives. And my Uncle David said, the Holy Ghost is in you, and I can't believe it. I can't believe it, but believe it. It is real as you people stand in front of me. Heaven and hell is real as it is you guys looking at me right now. What I prayed for, how I got to change, I prayed, I wasn't able to see my wife pass. And we had talked about this, um, something we thought we'd do together so she wouldn't feel bad about doing it alone. She wouldn't be ashamed. She wouldn't feel embarrassed about asking the Lord, I want to go to heaven, and I believe in Jesus. And Jesus is how you get your prayers answered, people. You pray, I said, in four days, three days, I'm sorry, three's a big number. We'll talk about that on another day. Three, three days is on my knees. Like you see, I made fun of these people. Look at that. Look at that. And there I was, not even thinking about it. I cried so much, I had sticky stuff coming up my eyes. I couldn't see. I wrote a song for my wife because it was the only way I could feel she was gone. I wasn't there. And the only thing I could think of, I cannot bear the thought of my wife, Kimberly Ann Connor, not being in heaven. Or her being in eternal peril hurt me and scared me. That's what changed me. And I said, God, in Jesus' name, for three days, over and over again, just let me know she's okay. One way or another. I don't care if you smack me, hit me, whatever. Just put the thought in my mind. It's not what he did. This all happened in two minutes and 17 seconds. I sat down on a chair. I turned the TV on. The reason I know it's two minutes and 17 seconds is because there's a thing that goes across the TV on the bottom that tells you how long you've been watching something. I thought I was at this place for a couple hours. 
This is what God showed me. It's every bit of it's real. There was, but the vision means totally something different now. I want to talk to you about that. What I thought it was at the beginning wasn't it. I've learned a lot. You can't take somebody else's place to go to heaven. That's between you and God. I saw Kimberly in a very bad place. Not what I wanted. And it made me, and I screamed no. And I was asked, you take her place. Instantly, you take her place. I said, yes, free her. Instantly, I was where she was. And there was bad things around me and terrible things was getting ready to happen. When I saw Kimberly on this place, I felt everything that's bad in this world. Greed, lies, cheating, stealing, self, look at me. Anything that you think your conscience tell you that is not right, believe it. That's God's passionate way to tell you. Your conscience telling you, hey, man, if it, ain't, if it don't feel right, guess what? It probably ain't right. Honestly, listen to your heart. Listen to, to, to God when he talks to you because I've blown a lot of that off. What's happened to me? God, I saw her risen, guys. I'm the last person to see her besides God and Jesus. Not on this earth, but he allowed me to see that. And I will tell you, you women, when you go to heaven, you don't need no makeup. You don't need nothing. You are perfect. I said she was beautiful. She had no lies. Her, her eyes was beautiful. She had a long white gown, which the very first Sunday I came here is her robe. And then I saw, um, it was royal, it was blue. She had blue sachets, and then the light in the door was white and blue. It was there. And that's, this being looked like a million fireflies, that's all I can say. Because my prayers, I hope your mom, your dad come, got your Jesus. And I learned more about that. But she was going up, legs not moving, left hand lifted, like she was an elegant ball. Madam, you want to go to the dance? You want to like to escort me? You come with me. And she was going up, and about three quarters away up, I knew it was her. I didn't see her face. It's the most coolest thing ever happened. She turned her head, didn't look at nothing in that terrible place. I called the waiting room, don't go there. And she just looked. She didn't look at nothing bad, nothing ugly, nothing. She just looked straight at me. And I was in such awe of that grace and that beauty, and there was peace there. There was peace I never thought was there, but it was there. So God gave me, he answered my prayer. Don't think God don't have a sense of humor, he does. Every time he asks for something, he gets you something else involved. One time I asked to quit saying something, he didn't make me quit saying it, but it made me realize when I was saying it. So about 18 times a day, I apologize to the Lord for saying something I shouldn't say. That's one. First time I know God answered my prayer straight up, because I meant it. When you pray, pray with your whole heart. It's the only time he's going to answer the prayer of, please get me to the next gas station because I'm running out. I'll quit cussing. doesn't work. <laughs> you got to pray with your whole heart. And, and because of the world and my selfishness, it was easy. The devil put stuff out here to stop you from stopping you, to distract you. Waste your time. Waste your time. In 55 years of life, I've never felt like God ever talked to me directly. And I mocked him for it. Two minutes and 17 seconds, he changed all that. That's how powerful it is. Two minutes and 17 seconds, God took 55 years and shoved it right down my throat. Everything I made fun of, I am 100%. God, Barbie, I am sorry that you got to live with this from now on. She'll take this. Real quick before I get off it, I'm five minutes, I already know. That's Barbie and Mike. Three years ago when I moved to the, they needed somebody to rent an apartment. They rented the apartment. On the very first year I got there, she come down right before Christmas, couldn't wait to give it to me. It's my Bible sitting right over behind her. I never opened that Bible for three years for nothing. She gave me a glass of water to drink every day. Here's your water. And I put my finger in it, smell it, look at it, whatever. I didn't care. I didn't want it. Just a little bit. I never believed in God, but I was too lazy to do anything. She told me one day God's going to smack the heck out of you. And he whooped me good. And I'm going to tell you, with when you, I think when you ask God for something, he answers your prayer. Let me, I will say this real quick before I go. Um, it comes a lesson with it. He just don't give you what you want. God's not that way. God wants you to grow. This is what baptism means to me. It's my start of growing. And I'll look at videos of me doing this Jerry Jack Live stuff all the time, and I don't like that guy. As early as a month, I don't like him. I'm ashamed of him. And I, it's not me. It's not me now. A lot of people's not going to believe who I am. I don't know who I am. I say I'm a blank piece of paper getting rewritten. Hmm. 
I surround myself with. It's funny, God knows I love music. So um, I got friends here I didn't even know went to this church. I got people I played music with 20 years ago and did terrible things. And here he is going to help me. He's going to dip me in the water. I got people I never knew that was religious that's in the music scene that has been taking care of me and giving me a glass of water every day and I didn't drink it. Never said nothing. They didn't shove it down my throat because God knows that's not what I wanted. If somebody shoved it down my throat, I'm going, I'm out. He gave me exactly what I needed to prepare myself to accept this gift and I never knew I was getting it the whole time. And he let me be a butthole about it and mock him the whole time. That's how good he is. He, two minutes and 17 seconds. And y'all get to know me. When you get to know me, I'm going to get to know me. Because I don't know who I am. But I do know this. I got to find a way to balance what's on earth with what I believe in heaven now. It's a whole new ball game. Absolutely. It's a whole new ball game. And uh, I'm sorry I'm over five minutes. I told y'all, it, it's not happening. If Scott could take vacation, go to the beach, and come back with his wife and family. I got this. <laughs> I will say this, when the Lord gets you, when the Lord gets you, there's the energy that comes with it. Y'all thought I had energy before. It was false. It was drugs. It was false energy. It was false. It was wrong energy. With the grace of God in 2 minutes and 17 seconds, I'm telling you now, there's not a drug on this earth that makes you feel this. There's, an, there's nothing on the face. There's nothing on this planet. Church, can you hear me okay? So, at this point, there has been several individuals who have been a voice of the gospel throughout Jerry's life. And one of the things that we want to do now is have them come and celebrate this with us. So, if you have been a voice of the gospel in Jerry's life, would you come forward now and would you join us right here? Anybody and everybody who has. Even if it was just for two minutes. Well, that's everybody right there. <laughs> She's got more time in. She's time punched in. Mike second. Everybody else is jumping right on. Come on, yeah, you gotta come up here too. What y'all don't know, if this happens to y'all, Truman call you every night at 11.30, <laughs> talk to y'all till 1.30, and then his phone cut off. We couldn't quit talking about it. So um, it, it's, it's a family in this church. It's kidding. Absolutely. So Jerry, I've got two questions for you, brother. Do you believe that Jesus alone has accomplished everything necessary to save you from your sin and to bring you back to God? Yes, I do. Are you willing to faithfully go and do everything that he asked you to do as a follower of him? Yes, I will. Brother, it's based on that profession of faith that it's my privilege and honor to baptize you in the name of the Father, <laughs> Son, and the Holy Spirit. Did you notice? Did you notice? Let's do this. <laughs>